Thank you so much for your purchase. Thanks for buying the dual or the triple, or maybe upgrading later to the center dash unit. This video will show you how to assemble the units and how to mount it to your wheel. Additionally, I have a tutorial that shows you how to hook it up into SimHub and how to even start to tinker and modify the files inside of it. All right, so let's get on with the tutorial. Every gauge that you get from me will already have a universal mount on it. But if you order the Moza mount, you will receive that instead. So let's start by disassembling these individual brackets. Put the screws aside as we will come back and use those again. As you can see, the top ones are shorter than the bottom ones, so please take note of that. All right, remove these brackets. As I said, you don't need them. Don't toss them, you might need them one day. And now let's bring in the bracket. This first portion will show you how to hook up two gauges together to make one, what I call the Duotech gauge. As you can see, I offer you this bracket that connects them together, and it's basically a duplicate of the single gauge bracket just made together. So using the small screws, attach the top. As always, please don't over torque them. Everything is 3D printed to the highest standards, but you know, they are sensitive and you don't need to use power tools and you don't need to over torque anything. So for the purpose of this video, I'm leaving everything a little bit loose. All right, now they'll act like they're on a pivot. So try to rotate them a little bit until you see the bottom hole come through uh, the bottom bracket. And then using the taller screws, just screw those together. Again, I can't repeat this enough. Please be gentle when you do this. All right, and this is what it looks like when finished. As you can see here, these holes down at the bottom are what you mount to your wheelbase. Most wheelbases have holes on the front, and these will be universal enough to attach to those holes. And you can basically take a screw and drive it right through. So for those who have a Moza, they don't mount from the front, they mount from the top through these two small holes. And as you can see, it would look something like this. Your bracket will be slightly different, but it works the same way. All right, so now let's move on. Maybe you bought the triple tech gauges, which means you have three gauges to work with. Start by disassembling. You know, many of you have bought these as a dual pack and you're later upgrading. I made sure to design everything to be hyper modular so you can grow with the ecosystem as you can afford it or as you feel like it. So as we remove these screws, please place them aside. When you buy a triple gauge, I will provide you with even more screws. As you will see, more will be needed. Mounted, let's put them aside and let's introduce the center add-on. So as you can see, it's a four inch screen and there's the little hollow spots where the round gauges fit. So turn it around and let's look at it. What we see is, of course, the four holes and another four holes. All right, so bring the two gauges back, put everything upside down and then slowly and gently wiggle everything around until they fit together and they should fit together perfectly. Now align all your screws, especially the small ones that you were provided and start screwing everything together. Once again, I know I'm going to beat this to death, but you have to be gentle. Start from the top and gently screw it together. It should be tight, but again, there's no sense for this to be over torqued. Move on to the other top. And I like to do the tops first because it acts like a pivot. Afterwards, you can rotate each gauge slightly to align the holes perfectly. Now let's move on to the bottom. All right, so there's the last one at the bottom. And now we have a full assembly. So what's left is four holes. And wouldn't you know it, those four holes line up to that dual bracket that you had when you bought two gauges. Or if you never bought anything from me, you will just get this bracket. Turn it back around. When you turn it back around, I want to point this out that this utilizes three USBs and they must be plugged in the front of a computer or a powered USB hub. Otherwise, these gauges will not work. They receive visual information, video information, as well as power through the same cable. It must be five volt or above, which is a USB 3.0. I promise you, if you try anything different than directly powering through your computer or a powered USB hub, this will not work. All right, so start mounting your bracket slowly, much like you saw on the dual gauge. And there she is, boys. And now you can see if you let the bottom ones be loose, you can use them as an adjustment. And that's exactly how this is designed. Once you mount it to your wheelbase, you can slide this up and down carefully and then reach back there and tighten it back up. So much like the dual gauge or the single gauge, there we go. That's how 
you mount it to your wheelbase. And again, it goes without saying, if you ordered a Moza mount, you will get this specific bracket, which is a little bit different than the universal mount, but works the same way. And there it is, let's go. All right, let's do a little SimHub tutorial now. And now it's time for you to download the dashboards. Uh, these are only provided to you after purchase. And I would kindly ask you not to share them with everyone. This is a lot of hard work and you've earned it by paying for it. Uh, it's not that I want to be selfish and not share with the community, but but at this point, I'd prefer if you just keep them to yourself. And as you can see, uh, you know, in this moment where I'm making this video, there are four, but I often update these gauges. Even last night, I added another center gauge, and here I am updating it as we speak. So all you have to do is click on each one individually up in the corner where you see the three dots, and it says more action. And you scroll up to download, and you download the file. Then you go to your download folder and double click it. It should automatically install into SimHub. To start off, you have to go to the Devices tab on the left side of the screen. Click on Add Device, and then Add Volcor Device. Immediately, because we're adding so many, I'd like to rename them. So I'm going to start by naming this Left Screen. I'm going to continue by adding another device. Remember, this is made up of two or three devices. And I'm going to write right screen. Now, if you only bought two gauges, you can stop here. But if you bought three gauges, you'll have to add another one. So we'll go right ahead and add that one right now, and we'll name it center screen. All right, now that we have them, we need to assign which screen is which. So as you can see, and you're looking down at your gauges, they're probably starting to be populated with some sort of dashboard. But we need to specify which is what. This is why we'll click on connect to a specific screen. You must turn off all the screens and turn each one individually, one by one. This will eliminate any conflict between SimHub and your screens. So make sure to only one screen is on connect to a specific screen, and this allows you to go through the three options. The computer and SimHub will recognize that you have three devices. So give it a chance, go through all of them until the left screen turns on in front of you. So once you're satisfied, make sure that you have this button right here clicked, idle behavior when game is not running. So in main dashboard, we will put whatever gauge that you like, whether it's a truck gauge or a sports gauge, but it's absolutely crucial that you turn idle behavior on. If not, what happens is every time you turn off the game or you're not playing, the gauge turns off. And every time that happens, all the gauges go off and they have to reload again. If you have idle behavior on, those truck gauges will always be on. And when you start your truck, they'll always be on and ready to work. So let's keep going. Let's turn on the next screen and let's kind of remember which serial number we used for the first one. Let's not pick that one. So go through it and find it. I guarantee you won't get it at first, but just keep keep switching serial numbers until you get a green light. And once you do, and it belongs to the right gauge in front of you, then do the same step. Make sure to assign a main dashboard and also make sure to assign an idle behavior to display the same exact dashboard. It's difficult to explain, but trust me when I tell you, if you don't put this on, the gauges turn off every single time. And every time you pause your game, they'll turn off. And when you turn your game back on, you'll have to scroll through all the gauges to get to your favorite one. So finally, let's do that with the final screen, which is the center one in this case. Find out the serial number. By this point, I think I'm starting to realize which is which. Set the idle behavior. And let's find a center dash that's appropriate for what I'm doing, which is trucking in this case. But there's one extra step that you need to do, and it's right here at the top for screen settings. These screens were designed to go horizontal, but we're going to use it in vertical mode. So please use it as portrait, orientation portrait, and make sure to enable touch screen. I personally like to turn my gauges down, not because they're going to wear out or anything. I just don't have them necessarily that bright. I play in a dark environment. The screens are already bright. I don't need any more brightness. So I settle on 30% for everything. And there it is. 
Finally, the last thing I want to show you is this. If you click on this button right here, that's called More, and you click on Edit Dashboard. I don't know if you guys knew this or not, but you can edit every single dashboard out there, mine or any other one that you might have. And the quickest example I can give you, if you click on an element and you scroll all the way down, you'll see a green button. The green button that says FX has a variable assigned to it or some sort of rule. And in this one, you can see that it's called speed. You can actually insert variable and quickly scroll up and down until you find whatever variable you want and it will start to display that. I know this is not making a lot of sense right now. I'm just trying to get you a little excited to look into SimHub. There are a million tutorials on YouTube. You guys should look into it because you can create your own dashboards. Uh, DSS Sim Racing Innovations is always going to be there to innovate and continuously add dashboards. But we are a small shop. We can't do everything over here. So we want the community to step up and create amazing stuff. I know you guys are capable of it. Go after it. For example, this round gauge. If you scroll through my stuff, you can easily find what's what and you can modify it. Another quick example, as you can see, in just in these few categories up and down right here, we assign miles per hour to the needle, but then we tell it that it only goes from 0 to 3,000 RPM. And then we need to tell the needle which to sweep from, from what degree to what degree. And as you can see here, as I start to adjust the degrees, which is the starting of the needle, you watch the needle move. And so you can start to understand how these things work. And now if I define where it starts, I need to define where it ends at the 3000 mark. But when I move it, it doesn't work. So I go up top and I go value 3000. You can see we're way past it, right? We're not matching up to the 3000. So now quickly, I'm going to end mess with the endpoint to lift it back up. Anyways, I'm throwing a lot of information at you. I just want to get you motivated. I know you can do this, man. There are so many tutorials out there, and I know you will succeed. Thanks again for everything. Please join my Discord. The link should be below, and do not hesitate to ever reach out if you have any questions.